Day 1. Lee Abbott drives into town and stops at a supermarket to buy oranges. In the store, we notice rocket space toys. The shopkeeper is watching the news, which reports on an amazing bomb in China. Lee then walks down the street to a park, where his wife, Evelyn, is pushing their youngest kid Bo on a swing. The Abbots have come to see Marcus, their eldest son, play baseball. Lee sits next to Reagan in the stalls and greets his friend Emmett, who is sitting behind them with his youngest son. Emmett's oldest son bats the ball and hits a home run. As he runs to the final base, the fans and Emmett chant dive as the fielders approach. Emmett then asks Reagan how to say dive in American Sign Language, to which she responds by making a diving motion. Bo and Evelyn wish Marcus good luck as he prepares to bat. Marcus misses the first two balls and is distracted by a massive meteor in the sky. The game ends, and everyone begins to return to their cars or houses. Reagan departs with her father, while Evelyn takes the boys. However, the aliens have already arrived and have begun invading the streets, killing a large number of humans. Day 474. The Abbott family exits their home barefoot. Just before leaving the farm, Evelyn tells Marcus and Reagan to stay there, as she secretly returns to the flooded cellar and swims in search of an oxygen tank. Meanwhile, Reagan informs Marcus that she is returning home and departs, leaving Marcus with the infant. Reagan collects the amplifier and microphone. She uses her clipper to cut a cord from the amplifier. Reagan and Evelyn return separately, and the family walks along the sandy path Lee had built until they reach the farthest point, where they silently step onto the dry leaves and continue their journey. Evelyn and Reagan transport the baby in a soundproof trunk lined with blankets, and the oxygen tank feeds a baby breathing mask, allowing the trunk lid to be closed. The family approaches a wire fence with an opening. As Evelyn walks through, her bag becomes hooked and a little sound Sound is created. She turns behind her, concerned about the noise, and unintentionally activates a trip wire, causing a bundle of bottles to collapse and jangle. Evelyn whispers, run, to Marcus and Reagan. Meanwhile, we shift viewpoint to a rifle aimed at the family. An alien begins chasing the family. Marcus is hurt by a bear trap while sprinting. He manages the injury calmly until he notices his damaged foot and screams involuntarily. Evelyn tries to stop him from screaming as Reagan creates feedback that the alien and finds intolerable using the amplifier, microphone, and cochlear implant hearing aid. As the alien fights the sound, Evelyn shoots it in the head. The family enters a nearby abandoned structure. A man grabs Evelyn as they turn the corner, covers her mouth with his hand, and gives the signal while pointing to an alien on the ceiling. The family follows the man to an underground soundproof vault. By placing a towel over the vault's latch, you can stop the door from locking from the inside and minimize noise. He sets a stopwatch for a few minutes, then opens the door to let some fresh air in. When he is secure, he informs the family that they must go because there is not enough food or water. Emmett asks Evelyn, who appears to recognize the man. Emmett responds by revealing his face beneath the baseball cap and scarf he was wearing. He says again that they cannot stay. When Evelyn inquires about Emmett's kids, he replies that his sons passed away on day one. Evelyn inquires about his wife, Lola. He tells that Lola passed away 11 weeks ago, that she became ill and that when her agony became unbearable and she started screaming, they moved to this abandoned warehouse's soundproof basement. I couldn't do enough, remarks Emmett. Evelyn queries Emmett on if he knew it was him, Lee, and whether he would see the fires lit by Lee each night. According to Emmett, he did. Evelyn queries why, given their friendship, he didn't come for them. After searching extensively, the Abbott family in a quiet place one had not received any communication from anyone and had not detected any radio signals, there were not many survivors remaining on Earth. You don't know, do you? They're not people worth preserving, says Emmett, explaining why the people departed. You're nothing like him, Lee. Reagan gestures and murmurs to Emmett. Reagan approaches her brother, who has been brutally dressed, in the vault to muffle his screaming, and is lying down to rest. Marcus receives headphones from Reagan, who then tunes in radio white noise by sweeping across the frequencies. Marcus bolts upright at the sound of music. As soon as Reagan finishes adjusting the dial, Evelyn runs over. Evelyn hears Marcus say, music, in a whisper. Startled, she goes to Emmett, who confirms that it is only the song, Across the Sea, playing continuously. Reagan gives her mother a telltale indication of lying when he says, Dad would have heard it, he would have told us. Emmett explains that he and Lola first learned about the signal when they came up here. He says you can't hear it down in the valley, 
where the abbots lived. Reagan determines that the signal comes from a nearby island that is roughly a day's walk away. She wakes Marcus up in the middle of the night, and they go talk in the soundproof vault. Reagan tries to persuade Marcus to assist her in finding a boat and railroad tracks that will take her to the radio tower. Her goal is to reach the station so she may use it to broadcast the high-frequency noise her hearing aid creates, which reveals the alien's weak points. This is a big step toward a better way of life because everyone, including the family, can use a radio to play the high-pitched noise and defend themselves from the aliens. Marcus feels apprehensive and opposes Reagan leaving. Reagan is adamant that she must give it her best shot since her father would have. Marcus threatens to notify mom, Evelyn, forcing Reagan to go out alone extremely early in the morning. She leaves a, keep listening, note on the radio. When Evelyn wakes up and realizes that Reagan is gone, she begs Emmett to follow her and bring her back. After a while, he gives in when Evelyn tells him that she wishes Lee could meet him face to face and tell him that Reagan is just the kind of person who deserves to be saved. Reagan, meantime, stumbles onto a derailed train at a train station and boards the lead car, which is the only one still on the railroad track. There are multiple skeletons and dead bodies. She looks for a first aid box in the driver's cabin and finds one, but she has trouble opening the door. When she finally gets to the box and opens it, the dead driver's skeleton falls on her giving her a scare that makes her scream. Soon after, an extraterrestrial being shows up, trapping Reagan as he tries to use the shotgun with one hand while holding the hearing aid to the microphone with the other. Fortunately, Emmett shows up and kills the animal. They hide in the nearby station office for fear that additional aliens may be drawn in by the ruckus. Emmett says he is here to bring her back to her house. With dissatisfaction, Reagan asks, what, home? Emmett hears Reagan's explanation of her plan, and she tells him that while they're there was nothing he could do in the past when his wife died, there is today. Emmett chooses to assist her in finishing the task. Evelyn needs to leave Marcus and the infant behind at Emmett's base so that they can get the supplies they need, which include new oxygen tanks for the infant and medication for Marcus's foot. Marcus fears greatly and does not want her to leave. Evelyn says she can't lose him too and his foot will only grow worse. Marcus acknowledges her and releases her. Returning to the sand walkway, she traces the path she and the family took to reach the store, where Lee had purchased oranges on day one. She passes the makeshift shrine near the bridge where Bo died on her route. She sobbed as she touched the pictures and put her wedding ring atop the cross. After putting the infant to sleep, Marcus returns to base and wanders around the grounds. The baby's oxygen tank indicator is in the red zone because it is running low when the camera cuts to it. As Marcus goes upstairs, he discovers a room filled with drawings of Emmett's boys. He discovers a dead body, likely Lola, lying in a bed behind some drapes that divide off a portion of the space. This startles him so much that he inadvertently topples a few things, revealing his position to an extraterrestrial that is nearby. Running back to the basement, he collects the infant and places him in the vault. He then goes back outside to get the radio and stopwatch, and just as the alien is getting closer, he manages to enter the vault and shut the door. Marcus is unaware that the door locks shut and that the towel is not covering the latch. Emmett and Reagan arrive at a few docks at dusk and search for a boat that will transport them to the island. At the end of the pontoon, they discover a young girl. As soon as Emmett approaches her, she catches him in a noose. A group of untamed individuals show up, tying netting around Emmett with bottles and starting to look through Reagan's supplies. After removing her hearing aid and stuff sack, they start to escort her away. Emmett gives Reagan the dive sign before squirming, noisily, opening the netting and grabbing the man who snatched Reagan's hearing aid. Many feral people are killed when several aliens raid the docks. Because of the disturbance made by the bottles, an extraterrestrial attacks while Emmett is still holding the victim. Emmett plunges into the sea, and the alien kills the savage man. When the alien hears Emmett swimming in the water, it leaps after him but drowns since it is incapable of swimming. Struggling to free himself from the rope around his neck, Emmett is still bound to the pier. Reagan reaches out to him with his hand as a little boat passes by. Opening his mouth to display Reagan's hearing aid, he gets on. After they loosen the noose, their boat can be seen sailing toward the island. Amidst the turmoil, a boat separated from the docks has left an alien trapped atop it in the corner of the screen. Breathing hard, Marcus realizes from the watch that he has to open the door. He fights with the door for a while before giving up in frustration. The infant is wailing when he opens the trunk. He begins sharing the baby's oxygen with a painful grimace and continues doing so until he nods off. 
As Evelyn arrives back at the facility with the supplies, she hears an alien wail loudly. She fires an oxygen tank at it in an attempt to detonate it, but the alien escapes unharmed. Still, the blast sets off the fire sprinklers. Evelyn uses the sound of the sprinklers to guide her back to the basement and around the alien. She is pursued by the extraterrestrial, nevertheless. The alien waits outside the door for Evelyn and Marcus as they shelter inside the bunker with the baby. As Reagan and Emmett get closer to the island, they discover a colony of individuals who have isolated themselves and are leading regular lives. The National Guard ordered the placement of as many people as possible on the islands once the government discovered the animals were incapable of swimming. But one of the animals makes it to the island by a different boat, and it murders a number of bystanders. But the creature follows them inside the radio station when they entice it to go elsewhere. After hearing Reagan and Emmett, the alien eventually slashes Emmett with its claws. But while it pursues Reagan, she manages to switch the station sound from the song to the noise her hearing aid made, which makes the creature weaker until she finally kills it with a pole. By using the noise to weaken the creature and shoot it to death, Marcus, who is listening in on the radio, makes it possible for anyone to kill the creatures. Make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications, so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.